The way that the Suns just continue to publicly humiliate the Nuggets is almost sad. If I was not the leader of a cult, I would feel bad for them, but I am the leader of a cult, so I love their misery. It makes me feel all sorts of warm and fuzzy inside. But I mean, like, getting swept in the playoffs last year, beating up your fans publicly, it became a viral sensation. Now the Suns fans have just completely taken over the Nuggets arena. It's like when, whenever I looked at the Suns bench, all I saw were Suns fans. I thought it was a home game. Devin Booker shooting free throws, he's getting MVP chance. Jokic is like first or second in MVP voting. He didn't get any chance at home. It's like, what? what is happening? I was just so impressed by this game because the Suns had every reason to not care. It's the second end of a back-to-back -back where you have to travel. Chris Paul's first game back, so a lot of people probably expect him to be rusty. Uh, last time you played the Nuggets, you blew them out by 30 and you humiliated them in the playoffs. So it's like, you have nothing to prove. The number one seed is clinched, so it's like, who cares? It's just another game, right? And the Nuggets need this. They're the sixth seed. You don't want to fall into some sort of play-in situation because you never know what can happen. Even though, who is it? The Lakers? That's hilarious. Uh, and I will be making a video about that tomorrow since Shaq wants to run his mouth. God, it's like, bro, we can barely understand what you say. You need subtitles when you talk, and you, you just could want to continue to say the dumbest things day after day but hey it's okay that's what i'm here for speaking of disrespect from the media some lady was running her mouth on espn today i'm not gonna look up her name because i don't respect the woman why don't i respect the woman not only because she says dumb shit but because she used to follow the warriors and you already know how i feel about that organization it's garbage as so is san francisco I don't like the Warriors. I don't like the color gold. I don't like people who like San Francisco. I know a girl who's like, I just like to go to San Francisco every couple weeks. I don't like her. So I don't like the lady, but she was saying uh, why she wouldn't vote for Devin for MVP. And I know, I know he's not gonna win MVP, but I just don't get it. Cause he's been the best player on the best team by far, right? It's like when Steph Curry won his unanimous shit. Is it because he doesn't shoot threes from half court? He's a very efficient scorer. And they even had like the injury. Usually when it's a good team and one of the top two guys gets injured, if the other one can carry, they usually get a lot of MVP consideration. Like Chris Paul missed a decent amount of time and they maintained the number one seed. A lot of people thought they were gonna fall down to like third or fourth and you're still the number one seed by 10 games and Devin just gets no love, but it's fine. And uh, I think he saw that interview because one of the things that she said was, He's not a good, he doesn't make an impact on the defensive end, which is like so stupid. It's like, do you people do any research before you talk or do you just talk? That's why I think NBA analysis is stupid because you can't know everything about every team. It's like, yeah, if I just casually watch the Suns, I would probably think the same thing. But I don't just casually watch the Suns. I have a cult to lead. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this team. And I watch this man on the defensive end. I mean, just today, what did he have? Like three or four steals in a row? And these weren't just like little, you know, quick steals. These were like, I'm just going to rip the ball out of your hands and make you look stupid. He had like three or four of those in a row. That tells me he can do this whenever he wants. Similar to a Chris Paul, his energy is rubbing off and I'm loving every second of it. But watching Devin play, I think he had nearly a perfect game. Now, obviously he wasn't perfect from the field, but I just really love the way he played today. He didn't go crazy from three. I think he only shot five and made two of them. Obviously, he's going to do his mid-range thing. He got to, but he got to the free throw line a lot, which I really like because that's, I mean, if you want to say the Suns have a weakness, you could just say they don't get to the line a lot and maybe like athletic fours, but how many of those are there? And if you have one, you could just kind of put Torrey Craig on them so it's not a huge deal. And if it's one like Giannis, you just put DA and go big. So they don't really have any weaknesses, but if you really want to be nitpicky, it's like, well, they don't get to the line a lot. It's like, yeah, okay, but they're top three in offense and defense, but whatever. Um, But I say, I think he played a perfect game because he picked his spots really, really well. When he had it going, he had it going. When he was double teamed, he found DA with lobs. He found Mikhail a couple times. He found Crowder. Like he didn't force any shots. He was very efficient from everywhere on the field. And when Highland was going off, he took that assignment personally and locked him down. And then he had those steals too that changed the, the dynamic of the game. So 
I think Devin was excellent today. I really do. I think this was his most impressive game of the season to me, especially when it's the second night of a back-to-back -back and you just balled out the literally last night and traveled. And it was a very like playoff atmosphere type game because like I said, the Nuggets needed this win. You didn't get it because you don't have it, but you needed it. And I love to see you fail because I want every team besides the Suns to lose. It is a sickness, but it's how I watch the sport. I will never root for you. I will never cheer for you. I like Bones Highland. He has a great NBA name. He kind of seems a little mentally unstable, but I like the energy. He tries hard. He definitely seems like somebody that would talk to themselves a lot in a concerning way, but you know, I like his energy. But am I gonna root for him? No, I want him to miss every single jump shot he takes for the rest of his life. I hope he has an amazing life besides that. I don't know, maybe pick up a side hobby or something. But when it comes to basketball, I want the team I'm rooting for to dominate every single second. That's just how I view it. So get out of the way, you're in the way. And again, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, another side note, Devin is a very underrated law passer. He'll be damn near at the half court line and this guy's throwing just pinpoint law passes to JaVale and D. I've noticed he's been doing that a lot lately and that's tough. So I just wanna give this man his credit. This man was playing excellent. He's playoff ready. Devin is playoff ready. But what else did I notice about this game? The Suns, this is one of the few games I think the Suns played zero defense pretty much the entire game except for Devin with the steals. I was like the only really good defensive plays I watched. Mikhail made a couple good plays, but you know, that's what he does. But it's the second night of a back-to-back -back, and your team's up by 10 games to the, the number two seed. So I'm really not gonna be like, oh, why didn't they play good defense? It's like, yeah, you know, who cares? Take the game off, you still got the win. I'm not mad at it. Now don't keep doing it. Let's not make this a habit. And honestly, hey, let's start resting guys. Yeah, because I don't, like what else do you have to prove? You have the number one seed clinched. You've beaten every good team that could possibly be a threat except for like the Celtics. I think there's one more game against them. But do you really have anything to prove against the Celtics? I know their defense is good, but offensively they're pretty limited. I don't think they're that good. I do think they're a good team, but are they gonna make it to the finals? Maybe, if they do, I think that says more about the weakness of the East than it does about them being a great team. But that's just my opinion. I've seen them play like four games, so maybe I'm wrong. I'm not, but maybe I am. Before we end it, let's go over the numbers and see how they're looking because I know the efficiency, especially offensively, was crazy today. Okay, see, like this is what I'm talking about. On the second night of a back-to-back, -back, 38 minutes for Mikhail's too many. DA with 33. Booker with damn near 40, with 39. It's like, what are we doing here? It, what do you have to prove against the Denver Nuggets? They suck. They're a first round exit. I almost said again, but I mean, it probably would have been better if they lost in the first round instead of getting swept in the second, right? You, you got your fans getting beat up. It was, it was demoralizing. But let's get to the positives. Uh, <laughs> Mikael Bridges. 8 of 9 from the field. This man was excellent in the 4th especially. Uh, he had 22 points, 2 assists, 1 board. Man was muy bien. Jay Crowder, 50% from th the field. 4 of 7 from 3, okay. 12 points, 6 boards. Love to see it. DA, 8 of 14 from the field. He had 16 points and 7 rebounds. Get more, get more rebounds. Uh, <laughs> Devin Booker, obviously we know his stats, 49. Jesus, this man had 49 points and 10 assists. It's just like, what are we doing here? And shot 64% from the field and 40% from three. My God, Chris Paul first game back, shoot 60% from the field. It's just like, what? What are we doing? I will say I didn't love the offense when Chris Paul came back like that last minute, but like, that's my one complaint about this game. I think they should have just ended it with Payne. I thought I thought Payne was actually doing a good job because he hasn't been great in the clutch minutes I've been seeing, but he played well today. I wanted to see if he could uh, pull it off, you know, to the end. 
And if you lose, you lose, man. Who cares? But just keep the minutes down. I really do think they should start benching people because it gives, you know, Landry more time to shine, Payne more time to shine. JaVale's been solid throughout. I'm not really worried about him. Aaron Holiday, you know, like, Aaron Holiday may be crucial in the playoff series. You never know. Campaign could get into foul trouble or something, and, and we may need some Holiday minutes. So let's get these, these guys' confidence up. Uh, who else we got? Tory Craig, 3 of 7 from the field, 40% from 3, 2 of 5, 8 points, 2 boards. I'm going to need more rebounds from you, Tory. I'm going to need more. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to need more. Every every single person was efficient. The worst shooting was from Tory Craig, who shot 43. The, the second worst was 50. It's like four people who shot 50% today. It's like... Were the Nuggets trying? I, again, I watched this on NBA TV and they were saying that uh, the Nuggets have just been playing really bad defense all month, which is just a hilarious thing to hear. It's like, all month? <laughs> you can't figure it out, you have a whole month? It's just a bad month of defense? It's hilarious, your team is garbage, fraudulent. But I guess these are the issues you have when it's not ring season for you. Um, And good, because fuck them, you know? Actually, before I go, a message to members if you guys are still here. So my computer's on the way. I can't make the screen recording computers with this shitty laptop, but um, I'm literally building a PC so I can get it done. So I should have the videos up in the next day or two. So they're on the way. I didn't forget about you guys. I'm, I'm trying my best here. So I appreciate the patience. Glad the sun's got a win today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.